Now, my brothers and sisters, we would like to welcome Father Graham Ricketts, who will give us a 15-minute meditation on the presentation of the board. Father Graham is the WAF Diocesan Spiritual Director of the Diocese of Arundel and Brighton. I asked a wise priest for advice and prayer for preparing for this meditation. And he said, well, Graham, just imagine that you are talking to your mum. And so I'm going to talk to my heavenly mother and to do so in honor of her, the Blessed Virgin Mary. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God. And he said, now, master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised. Because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see. A light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, you see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. We cannot overestimate the importance of the temple and the importance of this moment. Jesus is naturally drawn to the temple and keeps coming back to it. We hear of it when he is teaching and presumed lost as a teenager when he cleanses it from money changers and market traders, when he speaks of its destruction and its rebuilding in heaven with living stones. There his glory will be our light and there will be no need of sun and moon in this new creation. Two mysteries are taking place at the same time in this simple ritual. The purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the presentation of a newborn son, a firstborn. Mary and Joseph are obeying the law. Outwardly, there is every need to, but really there is no need. Mary has not been seen in public for 40 days. She has given birth and the law says she is unclean. Neither can she go near anything holy or consecrated due to the hereditary effects of sin. In humility, she obeys the law, even though she is free from original and personal sin and has been from the moment of her immaculate conception. She is to go with Joseph a few miles to Jerusalem and stand at the gate of the temple to be greeted by the priest. They are to make the offerings necessary for her cleansing and to redeem their firstborn male. 
Remember the Lord has brought you out from the hand of the Egyptians and into the land of the Canaanites. In this way they are to make a sin offering and a holocaust. The sin offering was to be a young pigeon or a turtle dove. The holocaust? A one-year-old lamb. They could not afford the lamb and so were permitted to offer another turtle dove or pigeon in its place. The offering of the poor. They were to wait at the gate to hand over the required offerings to the priest for the sacrifices and to offer the child. The priest is to take him. They redeem him with five shekels to receive him back. A sin offering to cleanse one who is pure, innocent, a virgin and immaculate. A poor offering when she is the chosen mother of God and her son, the sovereign king, who is worshipped in the temple, more precious than any gift. No lamb, when she carries the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. A holocaust that will end all sacrifices and consume them all in the oblation and immolation of his body that will be offered once and for all on the altar of the cross. The thanksgiving sacrifice that will be perpetuated through history until the end of time as a memorial of his body and blood in the holy sacrifice of the mass. That simple and ancient rite should have ended there. But as the holiest of families enters in, a tired old man is aware of a light that has entered the courtyard. The sacred place has been made holy by a light that cannot be contained within its walls, but is shining for all the nations to see. Simeon lives by the Spirit. He is old now and knows that the promised gift will soon be his. Previous promptings were a preparation for today, and as his failing sight grew weaker, his spiritual sight grew stronger. His heart misses a beat as he takes the child in his arms. He who knew him before he was born in the womb of his mother is now recognized by his creation. God always keeps his promises. And now he is to be released from life that he might receive eternal life from the one who is the way, the truth and the life. The Holy Spirit reveals to him the sword of truth that will bring about the fall and rising of many. And the same sword of sorrow will pierce the very soul of she who is now full of thanksgiving for her child. Her work of co-redemption is nothing less than a sharing in her son's passion. Here is the true gift of mission to let the truth penetrate your heart and to receive a share in his cross, the living sacrifice of our lives. Francisco is waiting. He is waiting to receive his first Holy Communion before he dies. He has been rehearsing this moment in his mind and in his heart ever since he said yes to Our Lady's request. He wanted to help save many souls and convert many sinners. He has been waiting for Jesus ever since. He was used to penances. He gave his lunches to other children so he could fast. He spent hours of prayer, often hiding behind the pulpit where he couldn't be seen so that he could be near the hidden Jesus. He was waiting for him then, and he still is. Francisco had been in the school of prayer with Our Lady and the angels. He had no need of the other school now. He had no need of it where he was going. He wasn't going to have to wait to be an old man before he beheld and held his Christ. Although his light would soon extinguish, 
He knew he would soon flicker with the one who was about to leave the tabernacle of his glory and come to him, to give himself to him in holy communion. I will come to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. The priest comes. Francisco had already offered his life to Jesus and now he receives the body of his saviour. He receives the high priest, the victim, the sacrifice and holocaust, the altar and the temple. Francisco had been waiting and hiding in the church of God for so long and now he was being admitted to the heavenly temple of the body of Christ. In holy communion and receiving the Eucharist, the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, his body, his blood, Francesco enters the temple. From the letter to the Hebrews, through the blood of Jesus, we have the right to enter the sanctuary by a new way which he has opened for us, a living opening through the curtain, that is to say, his body. And we have the supreme high priest over all the house of God. So as we go in, let us be sincere in heart and filled with faith, our minds sprinkled and free from any trace of bad conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us keep firm in the hope we profess because the one who made the promise is faithful. Let us be concerned for each other to stir a response in love and good works. Do not stay away from the meetings of the community, as some do, but encourage each other to go, the more so as you see the day drawing near. Through the blood of Jesus, we have the right to enter the sanctuary, but a new way which he has opened for us, his body. Mary is our mother. She carries us in her arms when we make the journey to the temple, the place <coughs> of the unbloody sacrifice, the mass. She carries our past, our present and our future as she offers us to her son, the high priest of our salvation. She knows all our prayers and intentions, our concerns and our joys. She is a good mother. She places us at the foot of the altar of the cross. Because we can't bear to stand there alone, she stands with us. She takes Jesus back into her arms at every mass, not the child, but the man scourged and lifeless. The redemption is now complete. The Lamb of God has taken away our sins and she waits again as she waited at the temple gate to greet the priest. She waits to receive his risen body and to share her joy with us. Mary teaches us, as she taught Francesco, how to wait for the risen Lord in Holy Communion. To stand by the gate, the tabernacle of the hidden Jesus. To open our hand, our mouth, our heart for him to come. For some, our wait has been a long time and we are unable to go to Mass. We may watch on a screen, perhaps. Perhaps our time hidden from the public gaze has been longer than 40 days. And we yearn to go to the temple again, to go to the place where the Mass is offered and the fruits of Calvary are received each day. Perhaps we yearn to hear the words of cleansing, of absolution, and blessing. We are hiding with Francisco, adoring the hidden Jesus. He will come soon. He is waiting too. When he comes, then our eyes will see our salvation, which he has prepared for us 
and for all the nations to see. And our hearts will be beating and thumping with joy. A prayer to Our Lady in Thanksgiving after Mass and Holy Communion. O Mary, most holy Virgin Mother, I have received your well-beloved Son, whom you conceived in your stainless womb, brought forth and suckled and enfolded in your sweet embraces. See, humbly and lovingly I give back to you the Son whom it was all rapture and delight for you to look upon. I offer him to be clasped in your arms, to be loved with all your heart, and to be offered up to the Holy Trinity in the supreme homage of adoration, for your honour and glory, and for my needs and those of all mankind. Most loving Mother, I beg you to obtain for me forgiveness of all my sins, grace in abundance to serve him more faithfully from now onwards, and lastly, final perseverance, so that I may praise him with you for ever and ever. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Yes. Saints Francisco <coughs> and Jacinta, pray for us. Yes. Servant of God, Sister Lucia, pray for us. Yes. Ave Maria. Amen.